Galactus is a Marvel villain of cosmic proportions. Quite literally, the devourer of worlds goes around and consumes planets in order to satisfy his hunger, all with morality thrown to the wind. Created by Stanley and Jack Kirby, Galactus first debuted in the Fantastic Four issue 48 back in 1966, starring in a three issue story arc that would later be known as the Galactus Trilogy. Since then, Galactus has made some momentous appearances in the Marvel Universe, becoming one of the top rated villains in the comics. So today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Galactus shocking facts, tidbits of interesting information concerning this gigantic big bad and how he's affected the comics over the years. Starting us off in at number 10, Biblical Origins. Let's start off this list by taking a look at the inspiration behind Galactus. After the Fantastic Four had been circulating for almost five years, Stanley and Jack Kirby decided to work on a new antagonist for the quartet, someone who had a godlike presence. According to Lee, I quote, We felt the only way to top ourselves was to come up with an evildoer who had almost godlike powers. Therefore, the natural choice was sort of a demigod. But now, what would we do with him? We didn't want to use the tired old cliche about him wanting to conquer the world. There were enough would be world conquerors in the Marvel Universe and in all the other comic book galaxies. That was when inspiration struck. Why not have him not be a really evil person? After all, a demigod should be beyond mere good and evil. He'd just be hungry. And the nourishment he'd require is the life force and energy from living planets. Now, Kirby would also note, I quote, My inspirations were the fact that I had to make sales and come up with characters that were no longer stereotypes. In other words, I couldn't depend on gangsters. For some reason, I went to the Bible, and I came up with Galactus. Galactus in actuality is sort of a god. He is beyond reproach, beyond anyone's opinion. Up next, number 9, Galen of Ta. Galactus didn't just become a god out of nowhere. Initially, he was a mortal man named Galen of Ta, an explorer and scientist from the pre-Big Bang universe. An unknown cosmic cataclysm started killing off all of the other life in the universe around his time, and Galen, along with other survivors on Ta, fled their home planet. Now, Unfortunately, they were caught in the big crunch. But Galen didn't die. Instead, he was bonded with the sentience of the universe, causing him to change and gestate for billions of years, eventually emerging as Galactus. Now, a watcher witnessed his birth and chose not to destroy him despite his need to devour planets whole in order to fill his insatiable hunger. This makes Galen of Ta the sole survivor of his dimension prior to the Big Bang, or at least that we know of. Moving on to number 8, a villain with a point. In Alex Ross's Earth X, we get a slightly different perspective on Galactus. He's a villain with a point. Now, while you could argue that in the regular Earth 616 continuity, he's necessary for balance, in the Earth X story arc, it's revealed that without him devouring planets, the universe would hold too many celestials. Turns out that the worlds that he was mowing down on were actually the embryos of new celestials yet to be born. And if there were too many of them, the universe would come to an end. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Earth was one of those celestial embryos. Now, by the end of Earth X, Galactus is turned into a star by the Fantastic Four's Reed Richards, which prompts his wonder child Franklin Richards to step up and become Galactus so that the universe will never be unbalanced. In at number seven, his armor. One of Galactus' aesthetic trademarks is his purplish pink and blue suit of armor, especially that helmet. But turns out it's not just a fashion choice. Galactus' armor actually contains his power. Galactus is made up of the power cosmic, which is immense strong. He's essentially raw energy. And if that energy wasn't contained, it could be disastrous. So early on, Galactus learned to control his power. And as it describes in the comic, he created a unique bodysuit which would help him regulate his awesome energies. Awesome as in big. So rather than it being a means of protection, which is generally the function that most armor has, it protects the universe from him. How did he craft it? Well, using the same energy that he's made up of, the power cosmic. Moving on to number six, the ultimate nullifier. Being made up of the power cosmic, there's not not much that can affect Galactus in terms of weaknesses. He's often portrayed as an unstoppable force. But over time, one of his biggest fears was revealed in the comics the ultimate nullifier. What's that? Well, back in Fantastic Four Volume 1, Issue 50, Reed Richards whips out this piece of tech that's meant to deter Galactus from killing the Silver Surfer. Galactus, in shock, tells Reed to put it down, and that his feeble mind cannot begin to understand its power. According to the villain, the ultimate nullifier has the means to destroy a galaxy and even lay waste to a whole universe. After that, Galactus departs, giving up and using dimensional displacement to teleport away, but making sure to warn the Fantastic Four that humans should be mindful of their promise of greatness to themselves, and that it may be the means to their demise. The Nullifier wouldn't return in the Earth 616 continuity until years later in Fantastic Four issue 341, with Galactus using the Nullifier to end his own life. Moving on to number five, the Infinity Gems. The Infinity Gems, or stones as we call them these days, are without a doubt some of the most powerful objects within the Marvel Universe. Nothing solidified that more than the painstaking conclusion of Avengers Infinity War. But uh, no spoilers. So once upon a time, Galactus ate the Infinity Gems. 
dude was hungry. In 2004, as Thanos issue number four, Galactus has set out on a mission to end his insatiable hunger by collecting all of the gems. But instead of solving the problem for him, it actually put him up against something much worse. Hunger, the entity which wanted to consume all of reality. It was manipulating him to eat the gems. Luckily, Galactus manages to defeat Hunger with Thanos' help. Moving on to number four, Aunt May. Silver Surfer has long been Galactus' herald, and the two have had their ups and downs and departures from one another over the years. But Silver Surfer isn't the only character to have been Galactus' herald. Yup. Aunt May, Peter Parker's Aunt May, was also a herald too. Galactus can bestow the power cosmic to whomever he chooses, and in 1984's Marvel Team Up issue 37, he chose May, making her into one of the strongest beings in the universe. Pretty wild, eh? This transformed her into something called the Golden Oldie, of course. Initially, Galactus wanted to make the super powerful Franklin Richards his herald, but Aunt May stepped in instead. And what does she do with her power? Well, she brings Galactus to an intergalactic chef named Doughboy, who makes him planet sized meals to feed his hunger. And these meals are called Twinkles. Yep. May then returns to Earth, and Doughboy becomes Galactus's new herald. By the end of the issue, it's actually revealed the whole thing was a dream by none other than Stan Lee. With Lee, Jim Shooter, and Danny Fingeroth, the creators behind the issue, all waking up. Although, according to the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, A to Z number three, this dream reality is actually an alternate reality in the Marvel Universe, named Earth 8417. Moving on to number three, the Cosmic Egg. Now, we talked a little bit about Galactus's birth after the big crunch in one of our earlier numbers. So, now let's talk about the details pertaining to that. Turns out, Galactus, when he was born, came out of something called a Cosmic Egg. And who created this Cosmic Egg? The Marvel Universe's most powerful chicken, the Phoenix Force. Now, Jokes aside, after the big crunch, the Phoenix Force was the one who placed Galen of Ta inside of the egg. When Galactus was all ready, the cosmic egg exploded, which caused the Big Bang. Galactus then went into incubation for hundreds and hundreds of years before re-emerging again. The remains of his egg would later become what he crafted into his home base, along with the ship, which was also stuck inside the cosmic egg with him. Up next, number two, Elvis. Here we have one of the weirder Galactus facts. So Marvel has a series of hypothetical storylines that are called what ifs. Each of these what ifs takes a question pertaining to what if events in the 616 continuity had played out differently, or just questions fans would want to have answered. And then the series tries to answer them. This one is from what if issue 30 Volume 2, in a story called What If Thanos Changed Galactus into a Human Being? So he does, and who is that human? Well, it's none other than Elvis Presley. Sort of. He was transformed into an Elvis lookalike. Luckily for Galactus, Adam Warlock shows up and saves the day. Now, the issue also contained a bunch of other comical what if stories, with its cover reading, What if no one was watching The Watcher? Which kind of looks a whole lot like a nice little jab at DC's Watchmen, which was released a handful of years prior to this 1992 what if issue. And we're solely basing that, I guess, on, you know, the font and the fact that they look really similar. And finally, in at number one, his form. Perhaps the most intriguing fact about Galactus is that no one has ever seen his true form. According to the comics, Galactus is not a being in the absolute physical sense, but rather a force of nature. And each mind that views him struggles as best as it can to perceive that unguessable force and an image it can comprehend. This was brought to Reed's attention when Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four was put on trial for resurrecting Galactus. And it was revealed that each race out there in the galaxy perceives Galactus differently. Humans see him as a gigantic humanoid man. Plus, in his one time cinematic adaptation back in the Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, we see him as a different form, a large sense sentient cloud, rather than his big ol' purple armor, which was arguably an attempt to convey this, or at least make it more realistic. As you may recall, it was a bit of a bummer, but from a production standpoint, you can kinda guess why the filmmakers opted out of using his typical form, although it did feel like a cop-out, and the film probably would've been better without it. Plus, fun fact, jumping back to one of our previous numbers, his armor, it changes too to the viewer, although he's always wearing some form of armor and some form of a helmet. So despite Galen of Ta having a form that resembled a human, Galactus, as a cosmic being, is ambiguous. Ambiguous, and entirely subjective to lower sentient life forms. All right, there we have it, friends. Which of these facts about Galactus surprised you the most? Which ones did you already know? Give us a shout about your thoughts in those comments down below. And let us know what other Marvel villains you'd like us to do facts list on. If you dug this video, spread that love and hit that like button. Share it with a pal. And if you're new, subscribe and hang out with us some more. We put out videos daily about all your favorite comic books. In the meantime, thank you for watching, everybody. I'll catch you all in the next video.